We got the boss, Kenny Cross, back here on the program. He's going to be making his debut in the XFC Lightweight Tournament on November 11th. Kenny, what's going on, man? How are you? It's going well. It's going great. I'm uh, I'm in a badass training camp. I'm, I'm uh, working extra hard, and I'm preparing myself for what's to come at this new organization. Yeah, it's gonna be uh, gonna be really cool to see uh, you you get in there. Uh, we got to talk first about uh, contender series. How has life been since then? Because you won a lot of people over, and uh, it was just a great performance. I know it didn't get you the contract, but you still won a lot of fans in that one. Yeah, how, how did you uh, did you like the fight? I love the fight. You? It was look, you beat a guy who was undefeated. You got jerked around a bit in terms of the scheduling and all that. Like all things considered, I think you did a great job. And I'm just you know I'm calling yeah, it like that's it is. How I, that's how I feel. I feel like there's a lot of uh, variables, you know. And I I showed up and I and I got the W. I beat a undefeated prospect who's been on the contender series before. You know, I went out there and I showed that I can I can hang with seasoned athletes. You know. Uh, high caliber athletes and, and take them out. It wasn't everything that we hoped for, but that's why I'm training harder now. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled with it. Life after is kind of the same, definitely some more no- notoriety. Um, but basically, you know, I'm still the same boy. I'm still, this, I have the same goals and I have the same people around me. So it's, you know, it's been pretty consistent. No, ab- absolutely. Um, did you have a lot of people reaching out being like, hey, you should have got the contract? Because I think that's how most people felt watching that fight. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, everybody that watches and knows me loves me and they want the best for me. So they everyone's going to naturally disagree with the decision. And uh, you can the, the game's not fair. Life's not fair. And when they asked me about my story, that was going to be if I did say anything about uh, my background is that my mom always told me that life's not fair and you know deal with it i had four other siblings and if i didn't get my way you know it was just like okay well i'm not always going to get my way so when this happened i've i've been uh conditioned to it so i just i kind of tell everybody like you know it's a blessing in disguise you know don't don't hate anybody because of this you know don't be mad it's fine and i'm still young i just turned 26 so this is just the beginning i get to grow and i get to you know do my own path now and, you know, I'll be I'll be the best in the world. You know, we're just going to see the way that the, you know, the avenue that I'm taking, you see how it pans out. And, yeah, keep going with a smile on your face. How did this all come together with you signing with this uh, new promotion? Because it happened fairly quickly after your Contender Series fight. Uh, they talked to me before my fight, and I really liked Myron Malaki. He, he was there from my second pro fight ever. So he reached out to me, and then uh, I was like, okay, that would be dope. You know, their XFC is coming over to America, going to relaunch. And he was talking about the broadcast that they had. You know, uh, Sean Shelby hits me up or d- hits up Darren, and we ended up going and taking that fight. So I kind of, you know, put it on the back burner. Don't get the contract. First person I'm looking to hear from is Myron. And, you know, no events had taken place yet. It all came together perfectly. You know, my career, uh, aside from not getting a USC contract, like everything's really aligned like super lucky like i'm blessed to have the career that i have and been able to get the fights and the organization promotions the way that i've done so they were just opening up you know i want to stay busy i don't want to i don't want to beg the usc for more you know shots at the contender series they more or less beg me to you know fight for them to be their man that's kind of what i wanted i wanted to feel the respect and the love so i was i was sold immediately and i couldn't wait to to get back to to training for an opponent. What do you know about your opponent here? Eleven and six record. How do you feel like you match up against him? Um, all I, I look at his body, and I think six two is is a tough task. That's probably the best thing he has is is length. In this sport, I feel like length is is great, but also, you know, that's that's just uh, something I have to prepare for. No, I have to explode and get in and stay in and. You know, I'm also I'm long as well, so I got to use what I'm good at to to nullify him to take him out. I think 11 and six is. Oh, sorry. Uh, and no worries. Yeah, but uh, I think that 11 and six is someone that's had a few fights under their belt. Um, I actually this is my second opponent now. There was a guy that was five and one. He got COVID, and I didn't really watch any film on either of these guys. Still. I have a little, you know three and a half weeks until I fight. I'll probably start watching film on him next week, you know, and see what he's really good at, what he's not good at, 
But right now I just kind of think of, I just, now I gauge the distance. I'm training with Bobby Nash. He's slightly taller, you know, bigger. So I'm, I'm, I'm always just being aware of what my opponent looks like physically so that I can gauge how long, how fast to, to punch him in his face. Training camp, uh, you mentioned Bobby Nash there. How have you structured things? Because I imagine you were right in the gym right after that last fight. Yeah, um, I didn't know Bobby was going to be on the card. We were all kind of going to the XFC tryouts and seeing what was going to play, pan out. I knew I was getting a contract, and I knew I was fighting on November 11th. So I was in the gym crushing it, uh, you know, just doing my 5.30 to 7, you know, daily regimen. But I ended up adding uh, athletic Phoenix Athletics as my strength and conditioning coach. So now I'm, I'm doing that four to five times a week in the mornings before training. And I'm, I'm already so much stronger, so much faster. Like you can just tell I've been used. I haven't been using certain things that I'm, I'm applying now in my workouts and it's, I'm becoming a whole different animal, but yeah, was, my head's been screwed on and you know, I'm like, I'm, I'm like 26 now it feels, I feel a lot older at 26 than I did at 25. I feel like I need to be a whole lot more disciplined now. Like, I'm over half a half a century, so it's there's no playing around. We got to go out there and get some dubs, get them quick, you know, not get hurt, and then just keep growing. And that's what I feel like I'm doing. Um, in terms of the the cut, I imagine you kept your weight pretty low because this sort of came fairly shortly after, like I said, your uh, your last fight. You know, I fluctuate. I go back up to like 180, but I think if I if I cut back, I w- I like to do like two weeks out. I take like 10 pounds off and I'll sit around 170 and then, you know, then you have 15 to, to cut. So it's kind of just like two cuts for me. I like to use all the energy that I have with the extra weight to train harder, you know, and then, and then break it down and then continue to have enough energy to, to take off the last 15 while training extra hard, you know, and, and keeping that, that pace up so that I can go out there and really destroy these people and show them who I am. Who's going to be in your corner for this fight? Oh, Darren Krukshank. We'll see. I don't know how many corner men I'll probably get. Probably only two, but it'd be cool to have Kara Rowe in there. It, you know, my roommate, Jason Fisher, is always great to have him there, too. So we'll see who, who ends up working with me harder in the next, you know, three and a half weeks and, and who I'm really relying on and comfortable, you know, when they say something to do it and not really think about it. So they're all, it's it's great to have either or in my corner. How's this like? I don't need anybody. I like to just get them out in the first, you know, that's what I was going to ask you. How do you see the fight playing out? Um, I have to watch some film on him. You know, I'd like to say in the first round for sure, but at the same time, this is the first fight of the tournament. And just like any wrestling tournament, you kind of want to, you want to get some cage time while you're in there, get some good feel, you know, feel it out a little bit. Don't rush the fight. If you're supposed to destroy this guy, you should really get better while you're in there, not just be anxious and, and take him out because you can, We'll feel it out. We'll see the threat. It's four ounce gloves, so you always gotta, you know, take them out. You can't really play in there too much. But I'm gonna find a, a nice, happy medium of, of relaxation and and devastation. I'm gonna try to hurt this guy, hit him with some sweet stuff, because I can do it. And now I hopefully having one, you know, weight cut and having this, this extra strength and conditioning can can show that I have, have these tools that I can throw at people. So yeah, first round. You know, it's definitely going to be a finish. There's nothing that ever crosses my mind saying it's not going to be a finish. So you can definitely expect some fireworks. With this being yeah. a tournament, uh, I don't know if you've had a chance to look at some of the other participants, but is there anyone you want to fight in this tournament that you think would be a fun style matchup? Have you even, like, considered that yet? I probably should, but I haven't. I, haven't <laughs> yeah. I think uh, Matt Brendo sent me a bunch of their records, so I know who is supposed to win on paper. You, Everyone knows fight science doesn't add up. I'm really, I'm really uh, excited to get this fight off and then watch the other guys, you know, fight. I think there's nothing better than seeing two of them go live, and I feel like that will be their latest performance. So that'll be the best that they are, and then I really get to see their weaknesses, you know, live. And I feel like I'll be able to break them down immediately as soon as I see that. So that's why I think I haven't really paid attention to who who's all out there because when the time comes, I will see who's out there and I'll see what what they have to offer. Um, and then in terms of, you know, the end of this thing, like if you go out and win this, is it kind of one of those situations where you feel like if you win this tournament, I mean, there people are going to be coming to you. You know what I mean? Like you're going to have this under your belt. You've already got a great record. You pick up a couple more wins. Like, do you see that scenario? Is it something you've imagined where it's like, Hey, at the end of this thing, I'm going to be, you know, going to the highest bidder, not the other way around. 
God, yeah, I mean, you win this tournament, man. You're the you get a belt. I'm gonna have more money than I know what to do with, and honestly, when I win this belt, it locks me in for two years. That's the that's the play. So I mean, I'm kind of I hope that they want me, but also they're gonna have to wait for a little bit. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna stay shelf, and hopefully, I can continue to grow with XFC, and we can make this a nice uh, organization and make everybody money. That'd be great, but also, I like. Uh, I like people wanting me and not being able to be there for them. Like, you can want me all you want, but I'm I'm locked in, you know. And uh, you you could have had me before. Now I'm gone doing my own thing. Now you want me, so we'll see. We'll see how the fights go out. I think the world will want to see a lot of me, and uh, that just comes with every day training really hard and and you know focus on the the task at hand and and being the best and providing you know fun active. Uh, violence for people to watch and, and enjoy on NBC. So, yeah, that's another big thing. Obviously, the platform you're going to be on is uh, is pretty nice to have that too. Um, so, so just to clarify, there, like, uh, if you win the title, you're locked in, or even if you don't win the title, are you still locked in for for the two years? Like I you were saying, don't. If I don't win, I'm not sure what the uh, logistics are, but you know, we'll we'll go back and do some negotiation. Um, if I do win, I'm definitely here for. It's going to take like eight months probably for this. You know, every yeah, other tournaments week. take a while with injuries and everything. You know what I mean? Like, and we're in the COVID, you know, time right now, so you never know. So we'll see. Hopefully, hopefully I can stay ready and active, and then they'll kind of be like, uh, "Oh, well, he's not ready. Oh, well, we'll get a replacement." You know, yeah. I want to knock it out in eight months because after that, I got two years. So I'm, I'm setting myself, you know, XFC three years. It's time to grow, and then we'll see how everything pans out while I'm in the pool of XFC. But three years, they got me, and I'm going to give it everything that I have. I just did a commercial. So the whole day of my fight, there'll be a set lock commercial playing that I'm like starring on it. You know, it's a funny commercial. Uh, cricket. I'm supposed to do a, a commercial for cricket as well. I'm out here doing a bunch of photo shoots and they're giving me a lot of uh, material to, to grow my brand as well. Also being able to have all my sponsors, you know, on my walkout shirts and on my shorts and stuff is a huge, uh, curveball you know to to most people that think of ufc you know they 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 have one person and so now i get to keep everyone that's believed in me happy and represent them on a huge platform you know broadcast it around the world yeah and a shout out to your manager liam that guy works his ass off i'm so glad to see him get you so much so many opportunities including this one because that guy uh you know, I, I love seeing the work he's putting in and it's all coming to fruition so i know i was gonna mention him in these interviews but i want to give him some shine here. i just i snapped him on the drive over here when you followed me on instagram i said six years later finally got him let's go i didn't i couldn't find your account i would have followed you long before that for some reason i couldn't find you when i was searching so that that's what it comes down to but yeah i, I got sad then because people i knew people wanted to follow me yeah, I knew you got it. Here's what you got to do. Here's a little tip. You got to put your actual name in there in your actual like uh, thing. And then you can yeah. keep your username the same, but just put your name in there. It's easier to search. So that, that was my issue. I couldn't find you. So, okay, there you go. L- no, learn a little bit here and there. Uh, can't wait for this card. It's coming up here November 11th. XFC uh, 43. Kenny, really appreciate the time, man. Uh, anyone you want to thank any sponsors, any social media, uh, the floor is yours. You know, I would just uh, right now, I'd just like to thank you for for allowing me back on here, bro. We've been doing, you know, this is almost like five years now. I feel like. Yeah, it has been. Yeah. We're growing together. Uh, You know, I I love all my sponsors. You know, I just shouted them all out. I I didn't bring my list with me. (laughs) But, uh, you know, you're posting it on social media. They're going to see it on there. Right. So that's why you got to follow the social media account. What what is your Instagram account for those who don't know? Uh, uh, Cross the Boss MMA is my Instagram. And then. Kenny Mitchell Cross on Facebook is where you guys will find everything. So I appreciate it. Thank you for having me on again, brother. And uh, November 11th, it's about to be a great night. We're going to we're gonna kick off the first show of XFC in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, I think we're going to have 50% capacity. And, yeah, it's going to be one for the books.